Hey guys, my name is Javier Perez, and I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation Visual Arts Service Group. I've been in the gaming industry for about nine years now. In this lesson, we'll be covering the ins and outs of Substance Alchemist. I'll be showing you guys how we can create materials from scratch inside the program, and also how we can utilize our old height maps from previous projects. Um, we'll be using the old height map from our last tutorial, how to create trims inside a substance designer. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the video, be sure to do so on the channel. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started. So to get started, I just have Substance Alchemist here open and I'm just gonna hit create new and I'm just gonna name this uh, Alchemist Demo. Um, author, I'm just gonna put my name and let's hit create. So right off the bat, we're just going to get an empty slate. Currently, I have my um, my mesh to a plane. So as when I first load in, you can't see it because it's just on completely flat. But once I rotate, you guys can kind of see what's going on. Uh, if you want to change it to a plane or something else that fits your liking, you can go into the viewer settings on the left side and just go ahead and change it to whatever um, default mesh you'd like to use. So I'm just going to leave it at... Um, plane for now. And let's actually go into our resources tab to see what kind of materials we have right now. So by default, Substance Alchemist comes with a few base materials that you can start using and playing around with. But I think the real power that comes from Alchemist is the ability to import all of your substance source materials. So I'm just going to switch over to Substance Launcher. And um, you guys, if you have Substance Alchemist uh, installed, make sure to also have the launcher installed where you can load up all your different substance programs. But if we go over to the Substance Source tab, we can actually go here and look for all these different kind of materials that we can download and utilize inside of Alchemist. Uh, this, the launcher has a really cool feature where we can send any material we download straight into Alchemist. So let's just go ahead and look for some materials that we can use. So I'm just gonna type in stone and see um, which ones I'm liking. So I'm just gonna look for something that I could utilize for this guy. So maybe maybe this guy, just this limestone. So I'm just gonna hit this uh, Substance al Alchemist icon. And right there it says our asset has been sent to, uh, sent to Alchemist. So we can switch back to Alchemist. And if we go back onto our um, base materials. We can go into our substance source and it has sent from substance launcher. So we just hit that and you can see our uh, materials are start loading. So anything we've downloaded from the launcher uh, usually populates in here. So a couple things we can do, we can actually just look at these guys by double clicking on them. So and kind of see what it gives us. If we want to mess with the tessellation, we can go ahead and do that by going into the viewer settings, uh, go into the shader properties, and we can mess with the amplitude and also the quality. So that's just tessellation, and then this is how far it's actually being pushed in or out, okay? So if we go back into our resources, if we want to start utilizing these guys and start blending them a little bit, what we can do is we actually go into the Create tab. So once we go into the Create tab, um, our little preview of our materials will be gone. And now we're essentially working in almost a Photoshop-like mentality. So on the right side here, we have our kind of where we start creating our layers. So to begin, I'm just actually going to bring in, let's do a gray sandstone. Just going to drop this guy in here. And instantly, this becomes our first layer. So we can go ahead and mess with the different parameters of this guy. So if we want to mess with the roughness, the detail highlight, we can mess with the surface intensity. It's all dependent on what parameters are exposed in said material that you download for from Substance Source. From here, let's go ahead and actually create a brick pattern that we can utilize with this guy. So what I can do is we can add a layer, and we can start typing in brick. Or we can just click in here and just start actually typing in brick as well. So I'm just going to hit brick wall pattern. I'm going to let this guy load in here. And instantly we have our brick layout already overlaid on top of our sandstone that we just had here, which is super nice. So the cool thing about using an RTX and using a 2080 um, is that we just get our instant results, which in our 3D port. So we don't have to necessarily think about um, just 
bogging down or having to wait for these guys. It's so instantaneous, which is really nice. And it just lets you create and not have to worry about all that other technical stuff because this does take a lot of computing power. So it's always nice to just be able to throw at it whatever you want and it still runs uh, nice and smoothly. So from here, we can go ahead and actually mess with the X and Y how we do in Substance Designer. So we can go ahead and make a nice cool brick in here. We can actually uh, go into the sediment. We can mess with this guy as well. Instant sediment level. We can mess with that guy. I'm just actually gonna bring this down just a little bit, maybe something like right there. So that's looking pretty cool. Can mess with the age as well. So we can mess with the brick disorder. We can start seeing some nice angle variation in here, which is really nice. So maybe some we want some color variation within the bricks, but I'm just gonna keep it on the nice sandstone that we have here. So Cool. Um, say we wanted to completely change this guy, we can actually go ahead and because it's layer based, we can actually go ahead and maybe drag this guy in here. And because it works from top to bottom, um, the gray sandstone is going to be canceled out and the the new limestone amber raw is going to be in here. So now we have both of these guys being blended. But if I were to take away the gray sandstone, it's just going to be default to the limestone. And now we have a nice limestone material here. So I think I want to go into the limestone and actually maybe mess with the luminosity a little bit, maybe bring it down just a bit, something like here. Cool. So now we have some nice bricks quickly made inside of um, Substance Alchemist. We can actually take this further and we have a bunch of different layers that we can use here. So we can add dust, water, dirt, whatever you guys want. So I'm just going to hit a dirt and uh, see what kind of effects this gives us. So instantly we can see that our, um, our kind of bricks have gotten almost this dirty effect. So we can actually mess with the volume, the quality, anything really. So this is just a nice way to play around and see what kind of things uh, come up. Uh, if we don't want a brick pattern, we actually also have another um, generator that we can use. So if we actually go into, and let's actually just start typing in pavement. Yeah, we look for pavement. We actually we actually have the ability to create a different sort of pattern as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the brick pattern here. And I'm actually just going to bring this pavement pattern down here. And instantly we have a nice um, like kind of fanned out pavement pattern here, which is super awesome. So we have a bunch of different parameters to play with. So you know, it's all about your creativity and what you guys want to do with this guy. So maybe we can, we want to do the brick spacing. We want to make the corners just a little bit more rounder, edge roundness. We have a bunch of different stuff. Let's go into the patterns and see what we can do. Maybe we want to bring this guy up. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's actually take down the dirt just a bit. So bring this guy down. Cool. So let's actually go and add another effect in here. Let's go ahead and add, let's do a, what can we do? Let's do a moss. So a moss is going to actually populate the material with some moss, some believable moss. And there we go. So this is really nice if you want to cover your kind of material in some nice moss super quickly. And the cool thing, like I mentioned before, say we don't like this uh, pavement pattern, and if we want to go back into our brick wall pattern, we just have to bring it back in, and we'll have to just delete the pavement pattern, but our settings from the moss splatter are still going to be populated, so let's actually just bring this guy down here. There we go. We're already seeing our instant results, and then I'm just going to go ahead and delete our pavement pattern here. Also, I'm not really feeling this uh, limestone amber raw, so I'll probably go ahead and actually change that as well. Maybe we'll do a gray sandstone here. So let's go ahead and bring this guy in as well. Um, when you do add uh, another material, it's going to want to blend between the top and bottom uh, substance source material. So that's why you'll, you'll start seeing that we have like some of them blending in. So I'm actually just going to delete this one, and I want to keep it at... Um, at just the regular gray sandstone. Cool. 
So let's go back into our brick wall pattern and let's actually just bring this guy down. And so I want to make these tiles just a little bit bigger. Cool. So let's see what else we can do here. I'm going to actually bring this sediment level just down a bit. Nice. So now we have this, like, we have the moss growing in between the crevices, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and go back into our tile and let's try to get these a little bit bigger and closer. Maybe we can get some nice stone slabs or something like that. That's looking pretty cool. Cool. So we can actually see what the material is in the 2D view. So if we switch the 2D view, we can go ahead and see our normal roughness, ambient occlusion, and whatnot. So that's just a nice way to see what is going on. We can go in 3D, and then we can do 3D and 2D. That way you can see what you're doing. Um, let's go ahead and actually add... I want to add some water on this guy to make it kind of give it a wet effect. So we can add a layer. We can just do water. And I'm just going to let this load in really quick. Nice. So now you can see it's getting pretty wet and it's only going inside the crevices, which is really nice. So I don't want it to be as intense. So I'm just going to lower down the water level so we could get just a little bit puddles here. And maybe I don't want it to be as dark. So, But I do want the edge wetness to just extend just a bit, just to get the moss just slightly wetter. So. It's pretty nice. Cool. So what I want to do from here is maybe again, go back into our pavement generator and let's try to, let's try to get just a different sort of look to these guys. So we can see how quickly you can change just what kind of material we have here. So I'm going to bring this down lower into here and I'm going to actually go ahead and delete the brick wall pattern. So I still like all the different effects that we did, but maybe we can change uh, the pattern here. One thing I forgot to mention that within the pavement pattern, we do have a bunch of different effects that we can mess with. So we don't necessarily always have to be, have to have this fan. Uh, we can actually go into the pavement pattern and we have a bunch of different uh, things to choose from. So I think for this one, I'm gonna choose maybe a brush rock and see what kind of effects that gives us. So yeah, this is looking really cool. So if we go down, we can mess with surface poke, surface, we can mess with the pattern, maybe give it some nice warpness to it or something like that. Yeah, that's looking really cool. Tilt intensity, this is gonna give us some nice like undulation within each rock. So let's actually go into the viewer settings and let's just mess with the amplitude. That way we can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, that's looking nice. We can also mess with these settings within the just the 3D viewport. Uh, once I mess with the amplitude though, it looks like the moss is getting a little bit too thick. So let's actually bring this spread down just a bit. pattern. We can also go ahead and change the color of the moss if we'd like to do so. So maybe just make it a little darker. Cool. That's giving us a nice kind of mossy ground floor that we can play around with. Let's go back into our gray sandstone pavement pattern. mess with the base material scale. Yeah, that way it gives us a little bit nicer tiling and then we have just a little bit more density on the albedo. Cool. Now one thing um, I, I'm noticing is that the um, I don't like how each of these are the same color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going back to my resources and let's bring in that amber raw and let's try to blend the between the gray sandstone and this new um, other raw sandstone that we have. That way we can get some different variation within each tile here. 
So I'm just going to drag this guy in here. So instantly we can kind of see what's happening. We're blending in between these two. So if we go into the blending options here, we have a bunch of different things we can mess with. We can mess with the offset of how much blending is actually happening between these two. So let's actually maybe something like that. Let's bring down the contrast. with the blend opacity here. Yeah, that's giving us a little bit just crazier because this is a raw kind of, it's a little bit more damaged. We're getting some more interesting results here. So let's just bring the offset up a little bit. And then let's go back into our moss and let's try to mess with the spread here. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting um, a nice different effect here. So cool. So you can kind of see the power of this, um, just the way the layer stack is set up. We have so many different options that we can play with and I can keep messing with this for hours on end. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do one last thing is I wanna switch out this moss for maybe a different material. So if I just take away this moss splatter, Let's try to see what other um, kind of generators we have to play with here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to leave the dirt for now, but let's add another layer. And let's actually make sure to have the water pick. That way it, it shows up above the water. So maybe we want to play with the snow one, see what result that gives us. We'll have a nice snowy kind of stone slabs that we can use for an environment or something. So just going to let this load and see how much it covers on here. So that's pretty cool. It overlaid the snow onto it. So it looks like some snowy stones, which is really nice. It keeps the, the, the shapes of the stones underneath, which is really cool. So maybe we can start messing and bringing down the snow. And now this gives us a cool effect because now we can kind of see the underlaying uh, rocks here. So maybe we can bring up the melted snow a little bit. Yeah, that's really cool. So yeah, just quickly like that, I was able to go from a completely mossy rock tile to a snowy environment. And the cool thing is, just like in Substance Designer, if we go back into our pavement pattern, we can actually go ahead and start messing with the other settings and they'll stay true to the snow pattern here. So maybe we wanna mess with the, the spacing of these guys. So just bring this up a little bit. And there we go. We can kind of see now this, we have a bigger spacing, but the snow is still creeping in between these guys. But let's actually just bring this back. Not the desired effect. We can round up the corners. Cool. So next up, I'm gonna talk about how we can utilize our old height maps from our previous tutorial and start blending in some of these materials. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and save this material. That way, if we ever wanna go back to it, we just have it added onto our actual project file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save. And instantly we have this little preview of said material. So from here, I'm actually just gonna to go to create a new material. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna create it because it's gonna clear our layer stack, just hit okay. And there we go, we have a just new a blank slate that we can start to do things from. So if you ever wanted to, you can just go ahead and drag this guy into the layer stack and all the layers will appear. So to actually start applying materials to like our old height map, what we can do is if we go back into Substance Designer, I have the file already open from our last demo. Um, I just have the uh, trim texture that we created uh, in the part two series of our creating trim textures in Substance Designer here. And to actually utilize this guy inside of uh, Substance Alchemist, all we have to do is save this specific file as a SBSAR file. So to do that, we just right click on our package. We publish .sbasr file. And I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. I'm just gonna overwrite what's already there because I've saved it already once before, hit okay. And we're just gonna let this save out a little bit. 
Cool. So now that it's saved out, it's saved on my desktop. I'm going to hop over back into Alchemist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that file from our desktop onto the layer stack. So instantly we're, we're going to get a pretty much one to one uh, view of what we had in our substance designer viewport. If we want, we could go ahead and just lower the displacement a little bit. That way it's not as intense. But from here, we can just start layering on our old materials. So if we go back into resources, I'm actually just going to use a uh, metal generic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on top of this guy. And when we lay it on top, it should just cover the entire thing. So we won't be able to see um, our old kind of height map underneath. So what we have to do is change the blend mode to this guy. Right now, it's ch it's um, set to height blend. What I like to do is I actually like to set this to opacity blend. And once we set that, we can start messing with the blend settings within the actual material. So if I just go to height adjustment, and I'm just going to start bringing this down a little bit. And um, we go into advanced parameters. We set to recompute normal. And let's actually start messing with this guy. So if we do a height depth, kind of see what's going on. Let's do high elevation down. There we go. So now we can see our underlying height map that we created in Substance Designer, but now we have a nice new material that's overlaid on our pretty much our trim sheet. So now, as uh, before, with the um, kind of slate stone that we did, that pattern, we can just kind of go ahead and start adding our different uh, nodes and adjustments onto said layer stack. So let's go ahead and add some, maybe some... Let's add some dirt onto the actual crevices of these guys. So I'm just gonna look for dirt. There we go. Just gonna load that in. And now we start getting our dirt kind of populating on this guy. So we can go ahead and change the quality, the volume, change the edge protect. That way it just keeps our edges. And we can just kind of start messing with the different colors as well. So, you know, if we wanna just change the color of this guy or do whatever we want. We're free to do that. We can change this to red if we like. We start getting some nice red color coming in. Um, let's go ahead and maybe add something that's a little bit cooler that's set for something like this metal work. So maybe we can do something like, I know there's a nice rust. I just got to find it here somewhere. Yeah, let's do this rust. See what that gives us. So I'm just going to let this load in. And there we go. So now we have a nice kind of metal trim sheet with some rust on it. And again, we have all these different options to play with. We can mess with the spread of it. We can make it completely rusty. We could change the smoothness of it, the damage scale, and edge wear as well. So we can mess with the age shift if we want. And I'm actually going to add some pretty cool intensity here. So yeah, that's looking really cool. I'm actually going to change the viewer settings to something like a rounded cube. Yeah, that's looking really cool. So if we go back to the dirt, maybe I can just lower the quantity a little bit. Yeah, that way it's not as intense. Maybe lower the volume as well. Cool. So now we have this nice kind of... Um, rusty metal trim sheet that we can start utilizing and applying it on our um, environment. Let's go a step further and see what other layers we can kind of mess with with this guy. So let's do a, let's do another add layer. And one other cool thing that we could do with this guy, just like the previous um, demo with where we're blending two different uh, materials, we could do that with this guy as well. So. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump back into our launcher and I'm going to go into substance source and look for maybe another type of metal that we can overlay on this guy. So let's go ahead and add metal. Maybe we want to do a nice galvanized or maybe a metal grinded. So let's go ahead and download this one and see what it gives us. So it's been downloaded to our alchemist. I'm just going to jump right back into it. Go into our resources, go into our base. And let's see if we into line, and it's right here, metal grinded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add it above our metal generic. That way we're gonna blend the this new metal grinded with our metal generic. 
So I'm just going to let this load in really quick. Cool. And again, um, we're going to have to do the same kind of treatment here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the offset just lower a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. Because it's still trying to blend with the metal generic, what I can do is just mess with the offset and contrast here. Let's actually change this the viewer settings to something like a rounded cylinder that we can kind of get a better representation of what's going on. Cool. So let's just bring up the slashes on this guy. And we can actually see where the blending is happening dependent on if we go into our advanced parameters, we can display blend mask. And you can kind of see where the blending is happening here. So I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to move with the offset and see what is happening here. So I'm going to recompute normals. Nice. Maybe we can change it to let's do um let's do a curvature blend. Let's see what that kind of result gives us. That's looking pretty cool. Let's bump up the balance of this guy. So it looks like this actual material is only being blended on the curvature because we chose curvature blend. So we can do sharp. Curvature Smooth Classic, it's all dependent on which filter you're using. So we can do edge, we can do cavity. So every different setting gives us a different effect that we can play with. So that's looking pretty cool. Uh, let's go back into our add layer and let's try to add some paint on this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the paint filter here. And I'm going to actually move it below the dirt and the rust for now. And I think I'm going to... Just like in Photoshop, we can turn off certain layers. That way we can kind of see what is happening before we add more things onto it. So uh, next to each layer, we have the little eye drop here. So we can go ahead and just mess with that. On the paint, let's go ahead and change the paint color. Maybe something like red or something. Maybe a nice bright red or something like that. Um, let's mess with the mask effects. Let's do a peeling level. Let's bring this guy up. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So we got like this nice peeling paint happening here. Let's bring down. Let's mess with the intensity. Let's probably bring this down. Technical parameters. Mess with the saturation. Just bring that down a little bit. And affected areas, we can also change where this is happening. So we can only have it a be applied to just like the edges of the um, material. So anywhere where we see an edge, it's not going to be applied to, which is really nice. So kind of mess with this position here. Maybe we can mess with the color here. Let's do something that's not as intense. So maybe as if I do white. Cool, let's bring up the peeling level. Let's actually change the affected areas to maybe curvature and surface. There we go. And let's actually, oh, let's go back and let's actually damage intensity, let's bring this down. Smoothness, bring this down, paint grunge. Maybe we don't want it peeling as much, so just on certain areas here. There we go. So now we have this nice peeling, and then it's it's being blended between the curvature and surface. So we have this like this nice overlaying kind of painted effect, but once we start damaging it, we can see the underlying um, metal that's beneath the surface. So let's actually turn on our dirt and our rust back on and see what kind of results we get. So there we go. Let's uh, change the the model to maybe a plane again. That way we can kind of see what's going on. So there we go. We have a nice, cool 
painted surface and it's starting to wear off and then we get the nice metal showing up um, behind it and then we have some rust. So that is looking pretty cool. So uh, one other thing, let's just try to mess with this sort of material and maybe we want to give it a completely different look. I'm actually going to take away the paint and let's go ahead and add some moss on this guy. Just how we did with the uh, slated kind of uh, rock that we did earlier. So I'm just going to hit delete on the paint layer and it should just keep all the other damage intact. So there we go. And let's actually add a layer and let's see, let's do a, where do we go with the moss, moss splatter. Here we go. I just want to show you guys the different kind of effects and kind of results we can get just by the different um, layers that we add. So. That's looking pretty cool. It's actually getting built inside the crevices so we can mess with the different spread, the covering power, growth variation. So if we had like some sci-fi metal panel out in the jungle or something like that, that's also an option. So we can mess with the elevation here, mess with the scale of the moss. And let's do some covering power here some variation pretty cool so maybe we want to do the moss from the top so yeah there we go so before I was doing it from the bottom we have a different options we could do directional bottom top whatever you guys really want to do so let's just leave it at the top here yeah cool and again just like before we can go ahead uh, and actually save this material. So if we want to do sci-fi trim, go ahead and save that. And there we go. We got the nice sci-fi trim here. And if we wanted to, we could always go back to any other material within our library by just clicking on it and it brings up our old layer stack and we can go ahead and start editing this one back if we wanted to. So that's the end of the lesson. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I just wanted to show you guys being able to use Substance Alchemist with designer, not only with creating your own patterns from scratch within Alchemist, but also being able to utilize some of the work you did inside of designer. Say you have some complicated kind of pattern that you can't necessarily do within the Substance Alchemist layer stack. We could go ahead and just create some interesting pattern within designer, bring in that height map and just finish it off inside of Alchemist. Make sure to stay tuned on the channel for more videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.